Hello, hello, this is Patty Jo. Let's get going on the first witness of the day for day four. I don't know who it is. We're still on the state's case. Uh, but let's see what, if Daryl learns anything today. <laughs> let's see if Daryl learns. Kind of looking at everybody. So weird. Thank you. Okay, why does he wear the mask? Why does he wear the mask? Everybody has a theory why he wears the mask. To hide his face, to look more innocent, the fact that his whole face looks disgusting to people when he sucks his tongue and whatever he does. Um, it's certainly not COVID, so because Wisconsin was one of the first places that said uh, the mask mandates are not a thing. Everyone, please be seated, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So. All right, the state may call its next witness. Thank you. The state calls Kelly Grabo. Kelly Grabo. Good morning, Miss Grabo. If you would please make your way to the witness stand. When you get there, please remain standing. We raise your right hand, and there is a step up when you get there. My clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. The state's kind of going in a, a logical order. Now you're about to give Shady the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, I will. Thank you. Please be seated. First thing I will have you do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell it. My first name is Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, last name Grabo, G-R-A-B-O-W. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Ms. Grabo, what do you do for a living? Um, I work at Burris Logistics as an inventory control specialist. How long have you worked at Burris Logistics? Um, I have just started last year in September. It's their first year here. Is testifying in court something that you do frequently with Burris Logistics? No. Are you a little bit nervous today? Yes. Okay. I want to ask you about Sunday afternoon, November 21st of 2021, okay? Okay. Did you take part in the Waukesha Christmas Parade that day? Yes. Were you a spectator, a participant? How, why were you there? Um, I was walking with Burris Logistics, my daughter and I. What's your daughter's name? Adelia. And her last name? Mafioli. How long is Adelia, excuse me, how old is Adelia? Um, she's 10 now, she was nine at the time. Okay. She was walking with you with Burris Logistics? Yes. Do you remember? Could you please, hold on, could you please uh, spell her name for us, please? A-D-E-L-I-A, -E last name is Mafioli, M-A-F-F-I-O-L-A. -I -I yeah, I would need that Sorry too. Sorry for the That's okay, thank you, Judge. Uh, do you remember where your group was positioned in the parade in terms of who was behind you and who was in front of you? Yes, we were directly between the Waukesha Blazers and Waukesha South Marching Band. Okay, so which of those two were behind you? Uh, Waukesha South Band was behind us. Gotcha. Um, what were you wearing that day? Um, well, my daughter was dressed up as Cindy Lou Who, and oh. I was wearing my... Please say he didn't run over Cindy Lou Who. leggings. Ugh. Did the parade go smoothly? No. Why not? We were struck by a vehicle. <gasps> he hit Cindy Lou Who! Can you describe how that happened for us? Um, while we were walking through, my daughter came walking over by me and she went to go. He's even ruined the Grinch as a Christmas story. He's the Grinch for the Grinch. He stole the, the Christmas from the Grinch, so the Grinch couldn't even give it back when he his heart grew because Daryl doesn't even have a heart. What would we call that? The Grinch's Grinch. Ugh, disgusting. Get more candy to go hand out to the kids. So she walked over, grabbed candy, and as she was walking off to the side, I noticed there was a difference in the sound behind us than what I was hearing throughout. So. Right as she walked off to the side and I seen she walked to the side, I turned, I don't know if I turned fully or just my head. And as I turned, all I seen was the hood of a 
red vehicle and I hit the red vehicle and rolled down to the side and landed directly between the Burris Logistics float and the red vehicle and I seen the tire go directly in front of my face. Okay. So the Burris Logistics float that you just described, what was that? Um, there was a black truck pulling it. We had a, I believe there was a snowman in the back of the black truck and then we had the Grinch in the float. Which side of the truck were you on when you were struck? Of the Burris or? The Burris truck. I was on the driver's side of the Burris. Okay. Where was Adelia? Adelia, last, when she grabbed the candy and walked off to the side, I thought she was over by the sidewalk when I spun to look. And what did you see when you spun? The red hood of the vehicle. When did you next see Adelia? Um, after I realized what just happened, I jumped up and took off running to go find her. And I seen her in the middle of the road, which I don't know how she got to that position from where I seen her last, but she was lying in the middle of the road. And there were some people around her trying to help her. Her shoes were down the road, as well as her glasses. She got knocked out of her little shoes. Your Honor, Exhibit 22 has previously been received and published. I'd ask to publish that again for this witness. Publish it again. Cold. He is heartless. I'm sorry, maybe I wasn't clear. The jury as well. Yep. Okay, do you see the screen in front of you? Yes, that's our flow. All right, uh, we are going to play with audio at normal speed from the beginning until about the 26 second mark. And we paused at 27 seconds. Miss Grabo, did you see yourself in that video? Yes, I did. What about Adelia? Did you see her? I, with the amount of people, oh. I did not directly see her. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. Oh my god. And turn the audio off. <sighs> because that's excruciating. I don't even want to the hear those screams. They're terrible. It's relevant. It's relevant. We'll play from the beginning. If you want her to say how it's relevant, it's not going to help you. Oh, and let's pause right there. At three seconds. Do you see yourself at this three second mark? Yes, I do. Just tell us where you are in the screen. Um, we're directly in front of the... She was like Russian Cindy band, um, Banner. Adelia is wearing a red like cape. She, right here. she was it's Cindy Lou Who. She looks just like Cindy, Cindy Lou. Leggings. It was really cold and windy that day. And then I have the candy cane dress on with my jacket and a hat and candy cane leggings. And what does it appear at this moment that you're doing with Adelia? Giving her more candy. Let's resume. poor lady watched the video of herself getting hit over and over again and whatever happened to her little daughter pause we paused at the 19 second mark do you see yourself in the video at this point yes i'm lying directly between the truck the, both of the vehicles the screen in front of you is a touch screen would you mind circling yourself 
Your Honor, I'd ask to uh, share the, excuse me, to save the screen of 22 and mark it as 22. I think we're on. <laughs> I heard her. Yeah. Would be marked as, and I'd move that into evidence. And again, will be we captured with the annotation. It will be marked. Okay, so once again, we have created a an exhibit where one did not exist before. We created an exhibit out of an exhibit, which is exactly what Sue Opper did when she when does later when she um, makes that horrific video into a um, an exhibit. She's just making an exhibit out of, so why isn't he having this psychotic conversion now? I don't know. He whose name we shall not say. 22B. Dr. Icky, I don't know. Say doctor, that would be giving him too much credit. At that point? Mr. Icky, no, that's too much credit too. Just Icky. Pause. Now we pause at 24. And we can take that screen down now. Uh, what did we see you doing at the end of the video there? I was laying between the vehicles. Did you get up at some point? Yes. Okay, and then? Ran directly to my daughter. What injuries, if any, did you sustain as a result of being struck by that SUV? Um, my, I think there's like ligament damage in my knee as well as my hand. Um, I did have some bruising and some road rash on my knees. Were you treated at a medical facility? Oh, Waukesha Memorial Hospital. The night of the incident? It was way later. I went in because I rode in the ambulance with my daughter. I refused to go anywhere else besides stay with her the entire time. So I stayed with her. We rode two children's um, in the ambulance. They did check me in the ambulance and see that I was stable and okay to do what I was doing. So I stayed with my daughter at Children's Hospital and I did not want to leave her until I knew she was at home in bed safe. Okay, so let me give you a little bit of insight on this type of situation. If it were a car on car or car on them, whatever the situation is, if you have a mother and a child or a father and a child or an uncle and a child or whatever, an older brother, adult, older brother and a child or whatever, and both parties are injured, and especially in this situation where resources are so stretched, I wouldn't say limited, I would say stretched to the absolute thinnest. Um, not every adult is going, who has to be, be with a child is going to be seen right away, unless they're both critical. Now, it appears that her injuries were less critical and um, that can be confirmed up to 72 hours after an accident is generally an acceptable amount of time to go and be seen for any injuries or injuries that surface later because a lot of times people get sore later and after. But in her situation where her daughter was not being taken to the closest but to the children's um, specialty center, um, whether it, we don't know whether she was critical or not, but I'm thinking she was probably more injured than her mother. Um, but definitely, even if she wasn't, I mean, they would try to keep them together in the multiple mass casualty ish situation for transport. But, um, if, if they can't, they, they can't, but they do attempt to keep a guardian with the minor in question. So in her situation, since her injuries could be stabilized moderately by EMS and she can choose as a as a an adult who doesn't have a head injury 
to sign a refusal for transport by EMS, then she could continue being the guardian and the person in charge of her daughter until that situation is um, taken care of. And then she could seek she could seek her own doctor, she could seek emergent care, she could seek uh, the other hospital, which it sounds like she may have. Um, but we all know Daryl's gonna take that and twist it, but it is not like that. You absolutely can be, in fact, even if she broke her ankle or broke her leg, they may have splinted it and then told her to go see an orthopedic doctor later, not a cast necessarily, because they don't know, all they know is they're gonna decide whether it's surgical or not surgical. If it's not surgical, they splint it and send you on your way. So even the hospital would have done, not the bare minimum, but the minimum that's appropriate until a specialist can be sought. So, the ER is not a specialist, <laughs> is the best way to put that. But Daryl's going to try to twist this. But what she's describing is totally happens every day, whether it's mass casualty or not, because people who are in accidents or often have their children with them. And we try to keep them together. We try to keep them, you know, even if, okay, so a lot of times I would take them to a pediatric emergency where I know that the regular emergency room is right next door and they can, after they're done, go. If I do have to separate for some reason, then I let the two ERs handle it. You know, I wouldn't, you know, I would definitely keep them together. But that's not the situation here. So she's doing the best she can. What injury and so is the EMS. Did Adelia sustain? Massive bruising all up and down her back. Um, she had a broken her Okay, massive bruising, I'm <laughs> sorry to keep interrupting this lady, but massive bruising to a child of nine um, and then just got hit by a car and apparently uh, some distance and hit the ground. Um, that can cause kidney failure. That can cause rhabdomyelitis. That can cause, you know, a muscle breakdown. That can actually cause cardiac problems and other really significant problems. So they say massive bruising. If she's bruised enough, her body may not be able to handle it all at once. And that may be, that may actually elevate to a critical level. Um, I've actually seen people who work out too much and are, don't drink enough water and that will cause the same situation. One guy who was a, an alcoholic stayed outside in the sun too long. And then all of a sudden he couldn't move and he was critically ill. So. Hand, road rash all on her face. <laughs> Infection from road rash. These things don't sound as bad, but they are very serious. Thank you. Oh, I can't wait. I'm going to try very hard to keep my cool, but this is going to make me angry because this lady and her little daughter were hurt and they were hurt badly. And he is going to twist this 17 different ways. Before you were struck by the vehicle, you said that um, you heard you heard changes in sound to the to, to, parade to that was the parade. people marching you in, heard it. in the back of you, right? Yes. Um, do you recall what the sounds were that you heard? It was just a change in the tone behind me. It wasn't the jubilee sound that we were hearing throughout the parade. You could tell something was happening behind us. Did it seem to get louder? Yeah. Was it already pretty noisy with the parade going on? It was, yeah, it was noisy. And you stated that it was uh, really windy and cold that, that uh, evening. Yes, very. Would it be any reason why you wouldn't be able to hear everything going on behind you? 
not, I wouldn't say I wouldn't be able to hear everything behind us because there was, I heard a change in the sound of the band. So obviously I could hear what was going on directly behind me. What was the point of that? <laughs> what was the that? vehicle that struck you, do you recall seeing uh, a driver? No, I seen the red hood of the vehicle. That's so all I seen. So you when you hit people from the behind, they can't see you, Doral. He whose name should not be spoken because he's a third party intervener. You didn't see uh, the driver, anybody in the vehicle? No, again, I just seen the red hood. As yeah, so she can't and say the... that there were 100 people in there. The license plates. Or... License yeah. place. What's a license place? <laughs> you recall how fast the vehicle might have been traveling? It had been going a decent speed. As I said before, I did see the rear tire going past my face. <laughs> And it all happened extremely fast. So you don't recall? I with the chaos that was going around How, that day. No, bitch, you I were running over her. Exactly. <laughs> God. And you stated that after you were struck, you got up and ran to your daughter, correct? Yes. Oh, he says something about her injuries not being and bad. You were able to do that with. Your leg injury? Yes. I guess that would be the adrenaline going through your body at that moment in time. I had to respectfully let her say that. I don't think he deserved to have somebody say that. How dare you run her over and hit her daughter and then criticize her for getting up and not just laying there because she I have, a, you know, I, I would not... I don't know. Most parents wouldn't care if, you know, what, what's that skit from um, Monty Python? You know, they're not dead yet. They're gonna they're gonna try to get to the kid. Ugh, God, you're disgusting, despicable. It did give me the strength to run to my daughter. Oh, she's angry. So Good. when was it that you knew that you had the, did you say knee injury? Yes, knee and hand. In the ambulance probably when she knew when her daughter that wasn't dead. pain in your leg set in? It was immediately. But you were still able to get up and run? Yeah. She's not on trial, Daryl. Her actions are not on trial. Yours you are. How long before you received medical treatment? Um, we were there for quite a while. Um, I think we were one of the last ones to leave in the ambulance as I sat with my daughter at Children's Hospital. After I got her home where I knew she was safe and secure, I then went, my sister took me to Waukesha Memorial Hospital at, I would guesstimate that was probably around two in the morning, right around there. It's actually not that After long. After I knew my daughter was safe. So it's you, actually not it's that fair long. to say that you waited a little bit before you tended to yourself. I attended to my daughter prior to myself to make sure my daughter was safe, yes. Do you recall how long you were treated? Um, I'd probably say about two two hours I was at the hospital. Did they, they give you any uh, pain medication or... I was taking ibuprofen and Tylenol. That is it. You ruined her knees forever. Do you recall what time you arrived at the parade? Oh, um, well, since we were walking with the parade, we had to be there early. We staged probably around three, I would say, I think it was. Did you, were you able to see uh, what the vehicle did after you were struck? No, my only attention at that point in time was to find my daughter and attend to my daughter. Thank you for the comment. 
It says, um, it's from Pips K432. She said, this evil man did this horrendous crime in Waukesha. The court is in Waukesha. Yep, jurisdiction. So we all understand jurisdiction, Daryl. I just had to do that. Love the comments. <laughs> they make me giggle. Um, love Miss Phyllis's good morning. Have a blessed day each morning. That makes me smile every day and re reminds me that no matter what problems I have, it's it's nothing. Now, let's see if we can get through this. See if he, he's, he's never going to have a point here. I'm not sure that a real defense attorney would actually have asked this lady any questions. Not even about not being able to see, oh, sorry, sorry. Not being able to see the license plate number or anything like that because it's irrelevant. She didn't identify him. The state didn't, so he doesn't have to dispute that. Um, her injury, he, him bringing up the injuries, He's just trying to make it seem like they're not that bad if if you didn't go right away, stuff like that. I've already explained why she has to be, there has to be a guardian with the minor if there's one available. And we don't care if you're a little broken, okay? As far as her knee is concerned, he messed her knee up forever. I have injuries from the fire department that they would like to say are not their fault. Definitely their fault. Absolutely their fault. My knees are never the same. I'll never be able to do the things I used to do. And I'm way too young for that. So, Daryl, you did it. You did it, bud. You did it. You're so despicable. So you didn't you didn't see what, uh, the route that the vehicle the vehicle traveled or anything after that? I see. She just said no. The aftermath after it went through. So that was it. Do you recall how long you were marching in the parade before you were struck? I do not recall how long we were there. Were you near any uh, cross streets or intersections? I don't know the name of the intersection, but yes, there was. I know we're right by Bosco's. There's a little walkway that takes you down to the river, or there's a little tiny side street off to the side. Do you recall if they were barricaded? I do not recall. Do you recall if any law enforcement may have been standing by those intersections? She's not doing anything do wrong, Daryl. She, she, was, she was Cindy Lou Who's mom, okay? That's what she was doing. Ugh. Ugh. God, you make me disgusted. Ew. You're such an icky man. Petulant child. Do you recall any reports coming over uh, any radios? By Why would she do... I do not recall that. The only thing I heard after we were hit was shots fired. So you did hear shots fired. Did that I come from? I don't know if it was directly from a cop or if it was people running. Did you hear the shots? I did not. So after you were struck, it would be fair to say that it got louder than what it was before. After, in the middle of the complete chaos, yes. What difference does that make, Daryl? Are you trying to prove that you caused chaos? With all the noise and chaos going on, do you think it would have been hard for you to hear a horn honking? I did not hear a horn. Would it have been hard? The question was, would it no. have been hard for you to hear it? Before it got to us or after? After it became chaotic. I was not listening to listening for a horn after we had already been hit by the vehicle. So it would be fair to say you wouldn't be able to recall? 
I would not be able to recall that. We have to use your semantics again, narcissist. Ooh. Oh, Daryl. You are so horrible. Did you file any uh, claim um, in this incident? What do you mean by claim? What do you mean exactly? These people don't understand you your file a, bullshit. A report as an injured party in this matter. Yes. So it would be fair to say that you identify yourself as an injured party? Yeah, she ran me over. Was injured by the circumstances that day, yes. Do you recall uh, the the officer that you reported your uh, claim with? Claim. Not it's not a claim. Mm -hmm. Now go to the report, Daryl. Have you seen or read a complaint in this matter? What do you mean by that? Have Normal people don't know that. Or read a written complaint in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Yeah, Mr. Cooper, are you referring to the criminal complaint in this case or something else? I'm referring to something else, the complaint. Well, then I'll sustain the objection uh, as to the form of the question. It's vague. Thank you. Respectfully asked on what grounds, Your Honor. It's vague. She just said that. Next question or rephrase. Do you know of any complaint being filed in this matter? Objection. Grounds. I love it when they finally tell him that all of his asking for these grounds and explanation just make him look even dumber in front of the jury. <laughs> that just tickles me. Grounds. Uh, the form of the question. In other words, the claim is not civil. It may be possible that you could give testimony in this matter? Yes, I was aware of that. And did you seek to give testimony in this matter? I was okay with doing so. And who were you informed by? Um, the district attorney's office. It, was that in form of a subpoena or was it a conversation? Or? Um, well, at first it was knowing that there was a possibility and then the subpoena. So it'd be fair to say that you did have a conversation. Yes. Conversation with with the district attorney's office. Yes. Anybody who gets hit by a car by a fool who doesn't stop is pretty sure that they're going to have to testify in court. Any normal person knows that. Did they ever inform you of who the plaintiff was in this matter? Objection, no. Grounds. Sustained. Are you aware of any plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Have you ever talked to the plaintiff in this matter? Sustained. Ever seen the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained under 906.11. Mr. Brooks, you need to move on to a new topic or I will close the cross-exam. I, I will move on. I'll just, it, it has to be some type of ground stated other than. No. No, it, it really doesn't. Or anything like that. The, the real ground should be put on record, Your Honor. We all deserve to know that you Okay, they're going to do it. Okay. I'd be interested to see how many that. times. Okay, so this commenter, Coffee Cake, like that one. I wish I was, I wish I was more creative with the names of my channels and handles and things. I'm not that, I'm not that cool. But anyway, Coffee Cake, two minutes ago said, I would be interested to see how many times he said on the record or for the record. He objected according to one of the other channels that I've watched in the past, he objected 
over 600 times. And I think it was law and crime that, that said that. So I would have to say probably somebody counted or, or has some kind of statistic on that. I'm thinking if that was at about 600, we're talking a thousand or more. Easily. 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 So are you bringing this claim against the accused defending in this <sighs> No, the state of Wisconsin is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On what grounds, Your Honor? It's vague. That's the form of the question. Have you received uh, seek to receive any recovered damages or anything in the matter? Of course. Um, the only thing that we got were was help to pay for our medical bills, as that was something that was completely unexpected. In other words, they didn't Christmas benefit break. from that your me. crime. Uh, the state of Wisconsin? I... Don't worry, Daryl. I think you'll have to pay those people back. But not enough, because some of the funds that these people got were of donation, and that would not be recoverable by the state. But yes, they should not have to pay a medical bill because you committed a crime. And quite frankly, I wish all of them would try to go against the um, insurance company for your mumsies because she should have never let you use that car. She should have never allowed that. And she should have never bailed you out. She should have never enabled you in any way. But if they started doing that, I'm can guarantee that insurance company is not going to cover it because of the situation. So she would be liable. I would love to see her buried financially. I'm sorry. Um, because I've been buried financially for the actions of my kids, but my kids were 14 at the time, not 39. It was <laughs> oh my God. Through... I forgot the name of what it was. Are you, are you, Listed as a plaintiff in this matter? No. Uh, she's a witness for this. Am I listed as a plaintiff in this matter? Are you a plaintiff? Did you think? And, and he's objecting. That That is something that, that I don't know how I feel about that. Because as somebody who was a victim of a crime, you no longer, as far as the state is concerned, you're a witness. You're not part of them. You don't get represented in any way in this process. And... I don't know, maybe, maybe victims should be. Now, victim advocacy programs are probably the closest that you get to having some sort of representation, but victims of crimes are witnesses because it is the whole of the state of everybody who's decided that running down a closed parade route while running over people and killing them and not stopping goes against the laws that all of those people voted for in Wisconsin. Okay. Filed a claim. A <laughs> yeah. relevant Compound ground. question sustained us to the form of the question. Mr. Brooks, did you file a claim? Move on. You've already asked about whether she filed a report. Move on. Do you see the state of Wisconsin president in the court? I don't know. Objection? Grounds? Sustained under 906.11. I warned you to avoid that topic or I would cease cross exam. So I'll give you one more opportunity to ask a different line of questioning. Do you recall when you gave your interview to law enforcement? Um, it was a few days after. 
Why wasn't it that night? Fear to say it was a few days or a week or so. I don't actually remember the exact time. Do you remember being interviewed by a detective, Jeffrey Adent? I remember being interviewed. I don't remember what the officer's name was. Do you remember where you were interviewed? At my house. Do you recall if it was on November 30 of 2021? I don't remember the exact date. Which she said already before. Can you recall why it took a little bit for you to be interviewed by law enforcement? Because I was at the hospital? Because of how many people were injured throughout this parade, it did take a while to get around to everybody. Uh, did you seek to be interviewed in any way? I don't think I seeked, but I did inform them that I was injured, as but well you, as my daughter. But you don't recall calling any law enforcement or attempting to file a report? Law enforcement that was there at the parade took people's name and it all ended up going to them. Did you follow up in the days after? I don't recall if I did. She is nervous, this poor lady. Do you recall stating that you did not see what happened to your daughter? I do recall that. Do you recall being left a business card by Dr. Daryl L. Williams, PhD? Yes, I do. Would it be fair to say that he was the one that told you what happened? I still to this day don't know directly what happened to my daughter. I just know that she was hit by the red vehicle as I was laying on the ground after I was hit. So it would be fair to say if you didn't see what actually happened to your daughter, you didn't see what happened to anyone else. It, she said that. Grounds. Grounds. Sustain this to the form of the question. She always says that. It's kind of a cop out. Would it be fair to say that it was difficult to see if anyone else was struck? Yeah, from so underneath your car, yeah. I was in. I seen a tire going in front of me. So, no, I did not see directly anywhere besides the tire going in front of my face. That tire in front of her face probably prevented her from seeing her daughter being hit. So what's your point there? Which point? So it would be fair Which to point? say that you didn't see anyone get struck besides yourself. Oh my God. How many times are you going to ask the question? It's kind of difficult to see beyond that. <sighs> No Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, can I just clarify, Ms. Grabo? The last time you saw your daughter before you got struck, where was she? Vacation. Eleven. Overruled. <laughs> she was walking over. Or she came over by me to get her can get more candy to pass out, and she was walking off to the sidewalk to hand out more candy. Sidewalk on which side of the first float? Objection hearsay. Overruled. That would be to the driver's side of, so to the left. Okay. And then you got struck. And where's the next place that you saw Adelia? I Objection seen Adelia. Hearsay. Overruled. She didn't see anything. It's not hearsay, Mr. Brooks. 
suggested that we should use that. Uh, Mr. Brooks, the objection is noted. It's overruled. What did she? What did she say? See, is not hearsay. I direct your attention to section nine hundred eight hundred one, sir. Um, you may answer the question. After I got up, I found my daughter in the middle of the road. She was no longer by the sidewalk. Was she? Where was she in relation to the the Burris, the truck that was pulling the float? Objection, hearsay. It's not hearsay. <sighs> Direct your attention to 90801, sir. It's not hearsay. Stupid. Go ahead, you may answer. She was towards the driver's side, the front end of the vehicle. So she was more towards the front of the vehicle. You testified that after you were struck, uh, the noise in the area increased. It got louder. You yes. saying that? And so, as a result of that increase in noise, you are not you weren't listening for a horn? No. Okay. What about before you got struck? Did you hear the sound of a horn? I did not. It's not hearsay. It's not hearsay. Overruled. Would you just repeat your answer, please? I did not hear a horn. Thank you. Even before I go and look up the actual legal definition of hearsay, I can assume that if somebody asks me what I heard, and I say what I heard, that would not be hearsay. That would be me say. <laughs> me say what I heard. <laughs> me say what me heard. <laughs> Stupid. God, he's dumb. Ugh. Fine, but if there is an objection, let me rule on it first, oh just God. so we're not talking over each other. Okay. Thank you. And I'm actually, I'm all done, Judge. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. You may step down. Thank you. Oh, thank God. All right. Dictionary. Just a dictionary. Oxford Language Dictionary online. Information received from another, from other people that one cannot adequately substantiate or a rumor. According to hearsay, Bob had managed to break his arm. Law. The report of another person's words by a witness, which he tends to ask for anyway. What did your wife say? What did your wife report, if we remember from the last couple witnesses? Which is usually disallowed as evidence in court of law. Everything they had told him would have been ruled out as hearsay. This is an example of hearsay. Where a person sees someone climbing into a window of a house. Later that person tells person, that's person A. Person A later tells person B that the person he saw was C. Evidence from B of what A told him is hearsay. So, not me say, but you say, or she said. Oh my God. Maybe they're gonna take the jury out and explain to this doodle head what hearsay is. And why? Your next witness then? Mm. The state would call Jeffrey Rogers. Okay. I'm gonna break it there then. Uh, we'll, we'll hear Jeffrey next time. I can't wait to hear the hearing that where they explain to him that A, what hearsay is, or they try to, and B, that he shouldn't keep demanding that this stuff verbally go on the record, that the record stands for itself. And ex an explanation could just make him look yet even dumber if that is possible. If that is possible, Daryl could look even more stupid. <laughs> ah! That might be the name of this so one could Daryl be more stupid. Let's see. Let's wait and see. It's a cliffhanger. It's a cliffhanger. Thank you for joining me. Like, subscribe, and share. Have a great day.